He's been on staff since 1965, I believe. He served in almost every capacity, from coordinator to uh, a, a public relations man, and he's uh, the publisher of the New American Magazine. He's authored numerous books, uh, been on radio and talk shows all over the United States and probably other parts of the world, too. And uh, his was uh, one of the speakers at the Rally for the Republic, where he spoke to, what, 10,000 people, 12,000 just two years ago, probably the largest group of people that ever heard of John Birch Society's spokesman. And uh, one of the books, he, uh, booklets he came out with recently was this little one on the Article 10 issue. But his talk today is going to be on the immigration issue, and uh, he's going to be going on a nation, nationwide speaking tour in a short time. So let's give a nice warm hand to uh, John McManus. We're all counting on a couple of jokes first. A couple of jokes first? At least. <laughs> oh. <coughs> all right, a couple of jokes. Uh, why doesn't the Mafia like Jehovah Witnesses? They don't like any witnesses. <laughs> <laughs> Enough of that. <laughs> Can everybody see the screen, I hope? If, if you want to move a chair up closer and, and so forth, let's do it. I'm about to start a, a nationwide speaking tour. In fact, it's going to be starting the, the Monday after Easter, which is only 10 days away. And I'm working on a PowerPoint presentation to take with it, and I haven't completed it. So I want you folks to consider the fact that you're guinea pigs. I'm guinea pigging my, my program here. It's called Stealing the American Dream, How Illegal Immigration Affects You. <clears throat> and we're going to have a DVD with it as well. And I've suggested to them that the title of the DVD ought to be Constitution C, Amnesty No, <laughs> uh, which has a little bite to it. And I don't know whether they're going to go ahead with that suggestion or not. All right, now, everybody here knows about the border being porous. Here's a good example of the border being porous. You can see people climbing here, and they're going over and under the fence and, and so on. So. Here's the Constitution of the United States that uh, says you shouldn't do that. Now, <clears throat> one of the problems that we face in our movement in the John Birch Society is how few people understand the Constitution, how few people understand its limitations, what it does and what it doesn't do, and, and so forth. So a lot of the instruction has to be about the Constitution. Now, there are movements to uh, have a constitutional convention and movements to do this with the Constitution and so forth. We've got to protect it. It's got to stay. We've got to have that standard by which to measure them. If we didn't have the Constitution, there'd be no way of measuring them. So let's talk about the Constitution for a bit here. All right? <clears throat> Article 1, Section 1. <clears throat> All legislative powers here and granted shall be vested in a Congress of the United States. All right, does everybody know the word all? Does everybody know what that word means? <laughs> all, all right? Very important for All right. Now, how about, uh, isn't a Supreme Court decision the law of the land? No. Well, no. no, it can't be if the first sentence in the Constitution is of any value. All lawmaking power belongs in Congress. So a Supreme Court decision is not a lawmaking body. It's the law of the case. What is it? Well, it's the law of the case, right? And in most of the cases that come before the Supreme Court, the decision ought to be it's none of our business and hand it back down to the states and to the people. But we get all kinds of law, and we get the Supreme Court certifying and making firm law that's passed other, other ways. All right, now, the executive branch of government, they hand down uh, executive orders, and they have the force of law. All you have to do is... Uh, sign the executive order, put it in the Federal Register, and it's now a law binding the whole country. Okay? Which is obviously wrong, because all legislative power belongs in Congress. Okay? So the executive branch is wrong now. And then they use signing statements <coughs> as well, not just executive orders. Now, let me make this point. <clears throat> An executive order is not wrong if it binds the executive branch of government. If George Washington put out an executive order and he said all employees of the government shall have a paid holiday on December 25th to celebrate the, the birth of the Lord, that's proper. But if it binds the whole nation, it's improper. All right? So an executive order per se is not wrong 
it's the way they're using them to, to uh, bind the whole nation. All right, now go back to that first sentence. Oh, well, here's, here's the classic example of thumbing your nose at the Constitution. This is Paul Begala. He was an aide to Bill Clinton. And he, at one point, actually said, stroke of the pen, law of the land, kind of cool. He was talking about executive orders. I mean, the man should have been fired right on the spot, but of course he wasn't. But that's an example of the way they, they operate. Didn't Obama just the other day, an executive order saying that none of the funds in the new health care shall be used for abortion, right? right? Uh, I'm in favor of no federal funds being used for abortion, but that's not the way to do it. If he can do it with an executive order, he can undo it with another executive order, which he probably would do. <laughs> All right, go back to that first sentence. All legislative powers herein granted. Herein granted where? In the pages of the Constitution. And if it's not granted in the pages of the Constitution, it's wrong. <clears throat> so if we get the first sentence in the Constitution adhered to, the federal government would be about 20% its size and 20% its cost. All right, so let's move on. Constitution says Congress shall have power to declare war. Right, we declared war on December 8th of 1941 against Japan. They later declared war against Germany and uh, 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 Italy and so forth. But how about the rest of the wars that we've been in? How about the Korean War? No declaration of war. The war is still going on. How about the Vietnam War? No declaration of war. We lost. How about Desert Storm? Right? No declaration of war. Right? They stopped after they got Saddam out of Kuwait, and that was it. Why did they stop? Because the United Nations resolution under which they acted allowed only that they get him out of Kuwait. Right? Are we under UN? Well, we could go into that. How about Iraq? What's the authorization for that? Another United Nations resolution. We've been at that war now for seven years. Right? How about Afghanistan? No declaration of war again. We've been at that one longer than we've been at the one in, in Iraq. Right? So, all right, how about power to coin money? Congress shall have power to coin money. All right? Does anybody see in that a, an authority to start a bank? No. Or start a Federal Reserve? No. Uh, can you coin paper? <laughs> no. Right? So <clears throat> we see all kinds of things that... Uh, all right, but there's one part of the Constitution that they're very careful about <laughs> and they stick with. Right? Article 1, Section 6 says that all members of Congress shall receive compensation for their services. Right? They go along with that one. <laughs> they have never stopped going along with that one. All right, now, how do you circumvent the Constitution? These are the various ways that it is done. They say that the Constitution has incidental or implied powers. No, no, no thank you, all right? They say that they can do this because they are providing for the general welfare. Now the Constitution says Congress shall have power to provide for the general welfare. But what did it mean? It meant the welfare of the country as a whole, not the welfare of any particular person or any particular group or any particular geographic part of the country. The, the nation as a whole, the general welfare is promoted and provided by a free enterprise system. All right? They have actually said that they can legislate where they are not prohibited from legislating. That turns the Constitution on its head. All right? The Constitution, you may do this and this and this, and that's all. And they say, well, as long as we're not prohibited from doing it, we can go ahead. Alan Greenspan has said that. Uh, my own congressman, John Tierney, has told me that. Right? He told me, well, we're not prohibited from doing it. I wanted to slug him. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, then they say there's new meaning for the words. Well, there's a wonderful quotation from Thomas Jefferson. If you don't go back to the, the meaning of the words at the time that the document was written and, uh, 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 and, and it, how it was explained and how the people understood it at that time, then why bother writing it down, right? So they say new meaning for words. Uh, these are all reasons that they use to circumvent the Constitution. Then they go to the Elastic Clause. This is at the end of Article One, Section 8. There are 17 clauses where Congress is uh, permitted to do this, declare war, coin money, uh, create an army, create a navy, and so forth. And at the end of it, 
it says they have power to pass all laws which are necessary and proper to enact the foregoing powers. And they always leave out the foregoing powers. Right? So you will find congressmen who are saying, well, the Constitution says we can pass all laws which are necessary and proper. Right? That just opens it wide. Right? So that's, that's only five of the ways that they do this. All right? There are five more. Judicial interpretation. The black robe justices will come forward and they will say this, and everybody <coughs> will say, okay, we have to salam on that one. We have to, okay? Then they will go to a precedent from the Supreme Court. And of course, a precedent is made when you un un undo a previous precedent. Okay? It's, uh, so people say to me, well, don't you want to amend the Constitution for this and this and this? I say, look, the only amendments I want are amendments that are going to do away with previous amendments. <laughs> and the same thing could be said about precedents. Right? Now, then there's the supremacy clause. At the end of the Constitution, it says the Constitution shall be the supreme law of the land. Right? All right? So they say, if it's the supreme law of the land, then all of these other things <clears throat> that we've done to the Constitution are okay because it's now the supreme law of the land. <laughs> then they come forward and they say, well, the people have a right to this and to this and to this and to this. People have a right to health care. People have a right to housing. People have a right to get bailed out when they, when they foolishly sign a mortgage that they couldn't afford and, and so forth. Right? So people have, that's why, that's another reason that is being used to circumvent the Constitution. And then finally, treaty law. The Constitution says uh, that we can have a treaty and, and if you read it not too carefully, you might say, well, it supersedes the Constitution. But Jefferson and Madison and several others, uh, Hamilton even, came out and said, if treaty law can supersede the Constitution, then we have no Constitution. So the answer to that is no, it can't do that. So there's ten different ways that they circumvent the Constitution, and we haven't even touched on, on the amnesty subject yet, have we? <laughs> okay. So let's touch on it. Oh, well, first of all, the Tenth Amendment. <clears throat> the powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states and the people. Now, <clears throat> I didn't put it in here, but there is a preamble to the Bill of Rights. And the preamble to the Bill of Rights is pretty specific about what the intention of the Bill of Rights was. And that was to limit the power of government. So I, 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 I cons I'll consider putting that in here as well. All right, now let's go back to the Constitution. The United States shall, first of all, it says guarantee to every state a republican form of government. And then it says, and shall protect each of them from invasion. Now it didn't say military invasion, did it? Right. You've got 12 million, 20 million people who have come across the border in the southwest <coughs> United States into our country, is that not an invasion? So Congress has the power to protect each of the states from invasion. Now we've talked about a lot of things that the, con that the Congress does that they shouldn't do. Right? And here's something that they should do and they don't do. Uh, <coughs> things are, are a bit upside down. Right? <coughs> Now, a lot of what we've talked about, Hal's already mentioned, this is the booklet that I wrote called Restoring the Rights of the States and the People Through Respectful Adherence to the U.S. Constitution. You go in here and you'll find out how did we get started on this business of reinterpretation. Now, let me mention this while I'm thinking of it, too. You go to somebody and you'll say, <clears throat> what do you think the job of the Supreme Court is? And I would bet you that 99 out of 100, maybe 999 out of 1,000 people would come right back and say their job is to interpret the Constitution. Right? Doesn't everybody hear that? Yep. Yes. It's totally wrong. It's totally wrong. Their job is not.